Welcome to Commsverse. This session is called Top Tips to Optimize Microsoft Teams Performance Anywhere, Anytime, and will be presented by JF PO and Christian Stokes. Over to you guys. Thank you, thank you. So, um, yes, my name is uh, Jean-François Pio, uh, and I'm with my colleague uh, Christian. Hello, Christian. Hello. I'm Christian and Stokes from the GSX Client Satisfaction Team. Core responsibilities are incorporating our solutions into client environments. Yep. And uh, so we are very happy to, to have all of you here uh, for that session. Uh, purpose today is to, to show you with uh, real data uh, and different experience that we have done uh, with, uh, with our tool, uh, how you can uh, ensure an, uh, an optimal uh, Microsoft Teams service quality. And uh, we'll focus a lot on the, on the voice today, and, but we will, uh, we will show that um, uh, what we say for the voice is also true for all the other, um, all the other features uh, of Teams. So, yes, Chris, as you are the, you are the, the master of the slides, you, we can move on on the next one now. So as you say, uh, well, Chris, you already uh, present yourself. So uh, customer success engineer, customer success engineer. Uh, I am responsible for the strategic alliances at micro, uh, at uh, GSX, and uh, mostly my main role is to uh, deal with the, the Microsoft partnership. So let's go directly into the into the into the the session now. So yep, next. Uh, Next slide. So thank you. So the, that's a short introduction. Uh, basically, everybody knows that the last few months have been uh, I've seen a search of uh, in Microsoft Teams uh, deployment uh, and active usage. We see. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember how it was, but like forty percent or something like that. And, and whether it's used for chat, collaboration, voice, uh, it has been really largely deployed. We have a lot of customers that have deployed like ten thousand, ninety thousand uh, user in like. A, one month and uh, and before that they were planning to do it in one year so it has really uh, made things faster and now uh, i mean we have people that are that are coming back to the office so enterprise uh, now have to be prepared for to support this kind of new hybrid world where uh, basically users are sometimes in the office and sometimes at home so the the number of people working from the same place is uh, constantly changing and, and the IT must be prepared for this scenario and, and must be prepared to ensure the quality of teams um, when you have one person at the office or when you have a thousand of them. So and, and that's why uh, there's a, that's why we do that session uh, we, and we will start with the first most important things that are uh, Microsoft recommendation, of course. So next slide. Uh, so right before going to Microsoft recommendation, just a few words on who we are. Uh, JS6 uh, solutions. So basically, we are doing, uh, we are offering a, a Office 65 service quality monitoring tool. So what it is is uh, it works with our robot, so it's a Windows services uh, that you can install on different uh, machine, Windows machine, and that will test 24/7 the, um, the performance and the availability of Office 65. So these robots are doing uh, exactly the same action than a user. So it would be uh, sending email, creating meeting, uh, uploading document in uh, in Sky, in uh, in OneDrive, in SharePoint. Of course, using Teams, using the channel, the post. Uh, post the post document in it, uh, chat, and of course doing the voice part. So um, conference call, schedule call, etc. Uh, and so they are doing that 24 hours seven, uh, measuring the performance and um, and alerting you in case of uh, in case of uh, any issue. So what we've done and we have worked um, a lot with Microsoft um, is that you can use these robots and put them in different conditions to see how uh, the route to the cloud is affecting the end user experience. So for example, you have a proxy and you want to know exactly how that proxy affects the user experience of my Microsoft Teams, for example. So you can put a robot going to a proxy, a robot not going to the proxy and compare with real statistics uh, really how that particular equipment is affecting the end user experience. And that's how we do our test, and that's how we will get the data today uh, to show you how uh, not, uh, for example, not, um, not uh, uh, abiding with 
uh, Microsoft recommendation, for example, uh, how does it affect the end user experience or what is the difference between uh, you know the experience when you are on a on a, on a 2G, a 2.4G Wi-Fi or 5G Wi-Fi, or uh, when you have a router that is bad, etc. So really, we can we can we can do all these tests, and you can see with real data uh, what it gives. So let's go in the let's go in the in the in the network part and the recommendation in order to optimize the the Microsoft Teams uh, service quality. So what you see here, uh, and, and probably you have already seen that if you have uh, checked my uh, Office 65 documentation for network connectivity. Um, so that's the, the you know traditional uh, chart, uh, the slide before, right? the traditional chart uh, for the, the, the for the architecture of the network of a company, and uh, and it's just a, I mean, it's a small reminder that despite the large acceleration in cloud adoption. Uh, most large enterprises still have this kind of architecture with uh, remote offices that are using MPLS to connect to data center, remote worker using VPN, uh, backhauling the traffic to the data center before aggressing to Office 65. And, and basically that goes against every recommendation um, provided by Microsoft to optimize the service quality of Microsoft Teams. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a very traditional architecture, but it doesn't provide good performance when you are using Office 65. So, the first recommendation of Microsoft is, uh, and we go in the in the next slide, um, is really to uh, try to do a direct connection between uh, the, your Teams user and the Office 65 uh, nearest founder. Okay, and, and I mean it's true for uh, users that are uh, basically working from the office, and it's true as well from the users that are uh, that are working from home. And uh, in both cases, you 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 should be able uh, to do it. But the problem is security, usually with our, with enterprises. And uh, but I mean, uh, yes, it is a problem, but Microsoft has really worked on it. Uh, so they have worked on really two important things. First, it's to reduce the number of endpoints and IPs that are critical for performance. I mean, if you look at last uh, year, I mean, uh, uh, 16 months ago, there was, I don't know, there was a hundred different endpoints and so many different IPs. So it was complex and it was moving, it was changing. So it was kind of difficult for an IT to allow a direct traffic to them. But now there are only four, as you can see here, there are only four URLs and a very few IPs, and they are called optimized, and they concentrate 80% of the traffic uh, to Office 65. And Microsoft has promised that to keep them stable. So that's very important. If you do the, the, the work around for that, uh, you won't have to change it every month or every two days. Um, on top of that, Microsoft really onboarded Office 65 in Office 65 a lot of security that you already have, uh, you know, in uh, at enterprise uh, IT. So DLP, conditional access policies, MFA, antivirus, anti-malware, all of that is already onboarded in Office 65. So you don't have to duplicate them. So all of this information, uh, of course, is available here, but uh, you can find that on the network connectivity principle uh, on the, of uh, Microsoft, and it's pretty well uh, detailed. So you know what to differentiate. You know you have to differentiate the traffic for this particular endpoint and URL, and and so that's true for the for the office, huh? and it's true as well for the remote worker. So for that. Um, you should allow your VPN to send the optimized traffic direct out the user local internet uh, connection to access the nearest of 65 front door again. And you can do that through split tunneling. And again, um, I mean, there's a lot of uh, articles. Microsoft have worked on that a lot during the, during the, the I mean, the, the, the big COVID crisis. There was a lot of uh, articles on how to do split tunneling, how to configure it, etc. And, uh, and that's very important really for the for your user uh, if you want to improve the, the the quality of service of Microsoft Teams. And, and I mean, because it was that uh, a big topic, so we've decided to test it. Like, how true that is? Is it really? Um, is there a lot of difference between uh, doing a split tunneling um, or so basically access directly uh, the Office 65 nearest founder or uh, or maybe it's not that much of a difference. So we wanted to test and Chris, can you can you show the result? Can you tell us what we do? Sure thing. 
Some of you already know our end-to-end -end service quality dashboards for Office 365. For those who don't know, as explained earlier, we test the Office 365 service quality with synthetic transactions that run on Windows machines 24-7, allowing us to see service performance baselines. It is the best possible way to compare the service quality in multiple conditions and to analyze the effectiveness of your route to the cloud. We have dashboards of every major Office 365 workload. Today we'll focus on the Microsoft Teams. Uh, to measure the quality of service, our robots use Teams exactly as a user. They log into the service, perform calls, um, execute chats, use the channel, etc. Today we will focus on the voice quality. For the robot, um, performs calls every five minutes and analyze the voice's quality as well as the network conditions during the call. Um, what I have here is um, information from our Singapore robots. We set up two of them running from the same office. One is correct, uh, connected directly to the Office 365 endpoints. That's the Pure Singapore, the green one. And the other uh, is using the traditional MPLS connection to connect to the central data center in France before accessing the internet and connecting to the 10 in the US. Uh, if we look at the MOS, the mean opinion score, uh, there are the stars you can uh, click to rate a call. Uh, when you perform a synthetic transaction monitoring, you cannot wait for the user to rate the call. Instead, the robots can rate their call themselves based on network conditions. You can see the voice quality of the uh, robot accessing directly the Office 365 endpoint is very good, which is the green. Uh, it's well above our threshold. And uh, the MPLS robot, you can see here the degradation in the um, main opinion score. Um, now you can put fact and emotion uh, to the side and use accurate data to um, make your route to the cloud decision. All right. And uh, let's continue with our other important things to check to ensure your team's quality of service. Yep, so thank you. Um, so yeah, I mean, we've seen uh, the, the VPN, we've seen like the, the difference, it was like the red robot was completely uh, an all, enfin, it was really uh, over the, the green one. So there's a, a lot uh, of difference in service quality, in the voice quality uh, between direct traffic and, and VPN. And we have seen that, I mean, we've done tests for many months, uh, and uh, it has always been the, the same, so you should really consider to do that. And again, and if you want to, to test the results, you can always um, use a tool like us. Uh, so now, uh, of course, the, the first things to, to check when, when you use a VPN, and there's more and more, I mean, more and more, with the people working from home, it's, um, it's really under, uh, under, uh, under strain. So you have to make sure that the VPN is sized for the fluctuating population of a remote worker. And, and the first thing is really to check the VPN license. It seems a bit um, stupid, but it's some it's problem that have faced well, uh, some of our clients. And uh, so it's really important to, to check that because, you know, the license is by the number of concurrent users. So it, it's very important. So you need to make sure you have enough license for that. And you also need to be careful at your firewall uh, but to make sure then when there is a lot of uh, number of uh, people that are being working remote at the same time that they, they have basically the, the hardware capability and finally the dhcp uh, is also under stress so beware uh, because you know when you connect to a vpn you are given an ip address and that number is really limited by the dhcp so you need to make sure that your dhcp can assign as many addresses as you have concurrent vpn user so that's three points that are uh, sometimes a bit well known, but also sometimes a bit forgetted. So it's very important to, to keep them in mind. So next is, uh, of course, the internet routing. So the router, I mean, basic and uh, the DNS. But we you know that the router is uh, uh, when you we work with, I mean, something like 400 large customer. Uh, and uh, with uh, large, um, I mean, uh, partners that are that are installing, deploying teams, etc. And I mean, problem with teams really uh, often comes from uh, basic things like router or Wi-Fi. Like Wi-Fi is the single most common point of failure of uh, team service quality. Um, router as well, and uh, and the router, you know, it's uh, it's something that's like 
there have been a lot of change in the router between the, the last three, five years. So it's very important for, for your offices, but as well for your remote worker, because uh, and especially the VIPs if you have some, uh, to check like how old are the router. Uh, between if it's more than three to five years old, you to change it. Uh, first, I mean, there's a question of Wi-Fi version. Uh, so a lot of people are still on Wi-Fi G, it's not the best one, it affects the, the, the performance. Uh, right now we are on AC, that is way better. And it's also, and especially for your remote worker, uh, sometimes does not provide access to uh, a 5G, 5G uh, Wi-Fi that we will see after can be better, but not all the time. Um, of the 2.4G. So, and, and, and finally, a faster processor usually is uh, as well improve the connection performance. So, and we have seen that uh, many times at customer that router can really affect the, the end user experience and that, uh, and then in this case, changing router is the first things to do, but the best things to do. And um, do you have an example, Chris, for that? I sure do. Uh, we had complaints from our Geneva office of poor call quality. We found it was only in the Geneva office due to a router. A new router is ordered for our Geneva office, but we're going to take a look at what was going on. Uh, we're tracking the last six weeks. As you can see, we're running into um, a performance issue with a call quality. It's only around 94% of optimal availability. The voice quality was inconsistent and reducing further over time. As only the Geneva office was impacted, our other locations were not experiencing the same quality reduction. We knew it was not a Microsoft issue. Uh, looking at our packet loss rate and uh, our RTT, it is um, consistently breaching the threshold. So we checked over the data with local IT, quickly identified the router as the root cause of the issue, and a plan to implement a new router at the Geneva office is in place. So you want to make sure all your routers have the latest version of firmware and check how old they are. If they're more than three to five years old, it is a wise decision to change them now uh, for a newer, a newer model and to prevent critical issues. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, we had the, that experience uh, in Geneva. We had the same as well, but uh, at one of our VIP in, uh, in Boston. And uh, so again, uh, it's uh, small things, but really uh, that impact the, 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 the voice quality. And we see that with the most, so it's, uh, it's really, uh, really important. Um, so now uh, uh, another point uh, really, to, really to, to check. And the, the slide before is the, the DNS. Uh, we spoke about the router, but now we have the, the DNS. And uh, the DNS is is uh, is a bit different. Um, I mean, the DNS. Uh, what you have to check, of course, is the DNS location and the performance for the remote uh, offices, and of course for your user. Uh, we have seen that some ISP DNS uh, are less robust than public one, like uh, Google, for example. And uh, so that can be something you can you can play with uh, with VIP, VIP. And generally speaking, the DNS does not really impact Teams voice uh, that is using Unicast, but it can really impact Exchange and uh, other Office 65 workloads. So we are a bit a bit of, of topic here, uh, but I mean Teams is part of the, the overall Office 65 suite and connected with all the other workload. So it's something that can be important if your user have have latency issue. And we have seen in many, many companies that sometimes, I mean, for, for the different offices, you have a change of DNS by an administrator uh, somewhere during the night, and, and then suddenly everything is slower. And it, it's kind of very important to uh, to, to check that. that JS6 is, is able to do it. Uh, not only uh, you can check the DNS resolution, of course, with PowerShell uh, and as well with the Microsoft connectivity tool uh, that has been in POC for a long time uh, that is available and that is very good for checking the, the DNS resolution and showing you like the, the, the pass the, the connection is doing uh, to go to the Office 65 uh, front door. So make sure that your DNS resolution is made close to your uh, remote office or user and in order to shorter the, the route to the cloud and improve the overall service performance. Yeah. So let's continue with the last architecture point that is true at the office and as well at home. And that's the, in the, the implementation of uh, internal QoS. So 
Uh, QoS, you know, quality of service uh, protocol, uh, and of course, but you should uh, you should make sure that you have implemented this quality of service protocol. Uh, you can have uh, you can have a router that are differencing the traffic, basically, uh, in order to always keep a decent share of the bandwidth for voice uh, call and of course uh, conferencing. And uh, we did the test with our robot user last year, um, and. I mean, it, it's true that it really, it is really impacting uh, the, the service quality, and it impact more. The, the more it impacts, uh, it's impacted the more when you have more and more people working from the same from the same place, working if you are in the office, or sometimes not necessarily working when you when you work from home, and uh, and that's why it's also important to do that uh, to check that, especially with your with your VIP from home. Uh, the solution is imperfect, of course, because I mean, especially for remote worker, you do not control if the ISP has implemented the um, has implemented the, the QoS as well. But it's still it's still something that uh, works to be done. So you can implement that uh, the QoS inside your uh, your network and at your VIP location if they have a recent router. And that's also what is important when you have to check uh, VIP or critical user. Uh, remote user, when you want to check and optimize their service quality, uh, it's important to check if their router is new enough in order to allow this kind of uh, quality of service protocol. Because if they can do that, it can prioritize the, the prioritize the traffic of one device, the guy that is working, over all the other in the in the in the in, in the room or in the apartment, uh, in order by in order to uh, prioritize everything that is done by the person that is working. Some router, some home router, as well allow uh, to prioritize um, voice over Netflix or anything else. Usually, what you find with router uh, that that anybody is buying is uh, to to prioritize one uh, one device over the other. But still, it's very good, and it's uh, it's it's really uh, it's really improve uh, the, the 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 voice quality, basically the team's performance and the overall performance of the person that are working from home. So check that with your VIP, and of course at the offices, but check your router and implement the the, the QoS. It's uh, it's uh, it's not magical, but it does make a, a difference. So now let's see how you can uh, as continue to, to help your uh, your remote uh, workers. There's also basic things to to, to do. Huh? We have we have already spoken about the router at their place, the QoS at their place, and uh, of course the next thing is to to use a rich client. Um, so the. Um, the, the rich client, I mean, there's a debate on that because it's, um, uh, the, I mean, there's no real documentation uh, that has been provided by Microsoft that that really said that the, the, the experience with the rich client is better than with the web client. Uh, what we know, we know that by the feedback of our customer uh, and that basically uh, because we asked the question, and uh, that basically told us that they feel that they think that uh, yes, the, the rich client improve a little bit the performance, uh, especially on the voice. But the, um, the also, I mean, another fair point to, 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 to address is that if you want to really uh, use rich uh, teams with the, the maximum capabilities, the rich client is also where, I mean, where nicer and where better. So the second tip is, is more about the LAN instead of Wi-Fi. And I mean, that's something that we always, uh, that we always, uh, that we always hear. It's not totally easy to work with LAN at uh, home for a lot of people. But the question is, how does it really affect the end user experience? Does it worth really to recommend that for your for your remote worker? Uh, Chris, do you have a do you have an example? Do you have some, some statistics about that? I sure do. Right. Let's uh, go back to our service quality dashboards uh, in our Boston office. We have two robots running uh, you see here. Uh, one is running on the machine connected to Wi-Fi and the other on LAN. If we check the MOS again, you can see that the um, Wi-Fi connected robot has different results uh, than the LAN connected robot. The green LAN performance is very stable, always between 4.2 and 4.3. And the Wi-Fi one is not as stable, drops for certain calls and makes the experience less comfortable. If we look at the network metrics, Logically, we find the same differences, um, such as our round trip time. 
so yes, LAN is always better than Wi-Fi, and remote workers should definitely understand that, especially if they're sending a lot of or spending a lot of time on calls. Yeah, totally. Uh, we we seen again the big difference between the the blue and the and the green in terms of uh, round trip time and latency, and so. Uh, I mean, again, it's uh, it's not by one thing that you will change uh, the overall experience of your uh, remote worker, but adding adding all these different little things really make a difference at the end. So that that's really something uh, that's really something important. So the second point, so go back to the slide, is the Wi-Fi. Uh, so the Wi-Fi, uh, well, you all know, huh, there's two main Wi-Fi right now: the 5G and the 2.4G. And, um, and and most of the people uh, think that by default 5G is better than 2.4 because 5 is bigger than 2. Uh, that's the main thing. But it's not necessarily true. Uh, Sometimes it's true, but it's not necessarily true. And um, because you know the, the 5G is more powerful, but it doesn't cross, it doesn't go through wall that well. That well. So. If your remote worker is far from his router, sometimes the 2.4G is better than the 5G. So, and that's something if you don't know it, I mean, you don't know and you think you have a bad connection and you have bad calls and you blame, uh, and you blame your IT or Microsoft. And uh, and but it's just something that can be easily tested either again by J6, but as well by any uh, speed test tool uh, that you can find if you have to support your uh, your remote worker. So. Uh, as well, the other tips, uh, of course, huh, if uh, if um, people uh, have to cannot use LAN and have to be far from their from the router, uh, it's to use a Wi-Fi mesh. Uh, there's plenty of system. Google provides some, Amazon as well, that basically repeat the signal uh, in the different other room. Uh, so that can be uh, interesting as well. And um, so, and do we have uh, an example on the on the 5G compared to 2.4G, uh, Chris? And do we do? Uh, for that, we have uh, remote worker robots at my location in Buffalo. Uh, one robot is on a, a laptop with a five gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. The other robot is on an HDMI stick on a 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi connection. From Buffalo, we can see differences between the two experience experiences. Of course, both provide OK results, but what is important is the consistency of the results. We can see the uh, 5 gigahertz provides more stability and in the service quality delivered by Teams Voice. This can be signified by the distance um, between the two robots are from the router, as Jeff mentioned. The 5 gigahertz connected robot is closer to the router. It's performing better against the 2.4 gigahertz. Every other metric uh, confirms that as well if we look into uh, our packet loss rate. We can see that the 2.4 gigahertz is um, constantly over the threshold, um, much more than the 5 gigahertz. Now I'll uh, turn it back to you, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So again, it depends how far you are from your uh, from your uh, from the router. So it's a point to consider when uh, supporting remote office worker. Um, so last point that can help them, of course, is the 4G uh, is the 4G hotspot. Uh, that's something that uh, that can be a good uh, a good uh, backup uh, when there's no other issues. So now uh, let's see what we what we've seen. The next point of like how to the best practice that we have we are with our customer uh, to support the the I mean the Microsoft team hybrid worker where I, I uh, now I I name them. Working sometime from home, working from time from the from the office. So we we have seen already that to be able to analyze what's going on uh, either at, for, with remote user or at the office, you need data. But that's the most important point. And, and for that, you need really to collect enough statistics to establish a performance baseline. And the performance baseline, you will use that to compare normal service and, uh, of course, uh, issues, compare, diff compare different network options, identify pattern in uh, service degradation, uh, measure the service improvement after introducing change. So that's why it's important to have the, to have a pattern, and that's why it's important as well uh, when you when you want to support your uh, your user at the get at the office or your critical VIP. Uh, it's to, to have 24 hour, uh, seven, uh, seven days a week statistics. 
uh, in order to really measure the service delivery, measure if, for example, you have a problem with Teams every uh, Monday morning and that's the only day. So when you know exactly when are the issue, what are the severity of the issue, um, who, uh, who are affected by this issue, uh, what are the different network uh, statistics that are affecting the quality of uh, experience of uh, Microsoft Teams? I mean, you have all the necessary information to, to, to dig into it and, and to be able to, to solve the issue. But again, without data, you cannot do anything. So, so for that, you can, uh, what our customers are doing is that they are installing robot user at their main offices. Uh, usually they install two of them, uh, one in Wi-Fi and one in LAN, so they constantly check if uh, you have a, a Wi-Fi issue. Again, because the Wi-Fi is the single point of failure for most of the, in the, the different offices for most of these kind of uh, services. And, and then uh, you can install a robot on uh, the, the, your user, on your VIP user. I have one on my laptop uh, that is running constantly. And uh, you don't have to have them like, uh, the whole year, but it's very good if you have issue with a particular VIP or some VIP to install this robot, let them run for a week or two weeks, do different tests, and then being able to optimize the service quality that your VIP are, are getting. And it's the same with your with your different offices. So with that in place, you have all the data that you need to, to make the change and, and to see the result and to know if it's really working fine or not. So next slide, so we've seen uh, team usage uh, are set really to replace um, most of the internal collaboration tool. Huh? Uh, the more uh, teams become the central point of collaboration and the more critical it is for the end user satisfaction, critical it is to, to ensure the end user satisfaction. And uh, so today we have seen read really the voice, uh, but of course, uh, the, the, the team's file management is also very important. Uh, it's really linked to basically the SharePoint file management. It's the same, it's a, it's, yeah, they're sharing the, the same system. And uh, if, you, if you have a remote teams and office uh, working together on multiple files, you need to make sure that it's, going, it's working fine. Uh, and the, the same thing, now Teams channel are also uh, kind of set to replace most of the internal email, especially as uh, the one with multiple recip recipient and when you want to share attachment and all of that. And, and that should drive cost reduction and efficiency. But again, that works only uh, if you provide a good uh, experience for that. And because if you are not, then basically people are coming back to their old habits and send email with plenty of uh, with attachment to plenty of different uh, people or worse are using shadow IT, um, you know, using other type of other type of file management system. So that's uh, something that uh, can be uh, very uh, dangerous and you don't want to do that. So this is why at JSX we have uh, done, uh, so not only the voice, but also uh, this kind of critical feature of uh, that are specifically designed uh, in order to check the, the availability and the performance of the channel, uh, post document, upload, the node, um, the chat, the presence, etc., etc. And uh, so maybe uh, Chris, you can quickly show that uh, to to us. Sure. Uh, sure thing. So here we're viewing the metrics in milliseconds from robots performing Teams actions. Uh, the robots are amazing because they test a plethora of user actions. In this presentation, we selected the um, channel creation, instant messaging, um, posting a message to a channel, uh, searching a Teams user, also uploading, uploading a file to a, um, to a channel. And you can see here the uh, mean time average and maximum time for these actions. And uh, Going into the real-time web UI, the concept for this is to understand what is occurring right now in your Office 365 infrastructure across every monitor location. Quickly identify which workloads are affecting your end users. Uh, this Office 365 operations view, it lists all the major workloads. The top tiles brief you on the latest uh, test results while the charts illustrate um, a collection of the past hour. Also can be maximized to 24 hours. Teams voice, uh, going into uh, Teams voice, we can see the uh, details of call quality, login time, and applicable network metrics. And we also have uh, viewed traditional Teams actions from Teams Advance. It provides you that information on, you know, uploading, downloading to the channel, searching a user, just like we did in the, um, uh, the Power BI. 
and you can quickly notice what actions are taking the longest, which ones you need to um, concern yourself with. And, and I'll go back to the slide for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, uh, it was good to, to see them. So, I mean, it's time to, to for the conclusion here. So, uh, we have seen now uh, that, uh, so we can go to the next slide. Uh, we've seen that synthetic transaction is uh, really the, the only way to, to, to manage the Microsoft Teams performance for your hybrid uh, user working in remote offices or from home. Uh, we try to show you today a lot of uh, Teams monitoring dashboard uh, for analytics, and uh, we've seen as well for, for real time with all the different uh, action, what you can monitor and, and you know how to use it when you want to do some tests, you want to optimize your route to the cloud and see really the results of your change or the different uh, network configuration. And uh, so, Quickly before uh, closing that session, uh, we, 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 we mentioned that before, but uh, we do that for all the main workload of Office 65. Maybe you can quickly go through, uh, through the, the main dashboard, uh, Chris. Uh, sure thing. I'll show you the exchange actions. Um, you can see uh, the same information that we explained um, for leveraging the different actions that you can perform in Office 365 for exchange. We're checking a modern authentication connection time, uploading an attachment, um, deleting a task, creating a folder, downloading an attachment. You can also see information for OneDrive, um, how long it takes to log in, um, uploading a document, downloading a document. And we can see in Sydney, it's currently taking users more than 10 seconds to log in. Um, for ADFS, we can see uh, authentication time and certificate details and Microsoft Service Health. So you can see updated Microsoft advisories. And for mail routing, um, you can, some examples are you can configure an echo and on-prem to cloud and internal to external routing. Uh, you can see the message uh, time it takes to deliver the message and also its hop counts. And uh, Gizmo provides a powerful set of possibilities to manage and continually improve your Office 365 end user experience. Okay, okay, so thank you uh, again for having shown all of that. Uh, well, we've, we've seen today how to optimize the, the Microsoft Teams performance for your user. We've seen that uh, you can uh, you can uh, you have actually you have tools that you can use for either for your VIP or uh, or for your offices, and we have seen as well that it's important for the the enterprise IT uh, to to be able to 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 see to have the, the team's uh, service quality to manage it to ensure it and uh, and as well to do that uh, for the overall Office 65 um, uh, services because again all of them are attached to each other and so it's important uh, to 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 have a view uh, globally on the service that is delivered to to your user. So I guess we are at the end of this uh, of this session. Uh, thank you very much. I don't think we have uh, any question. Hello, Dave. Uh, yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. Um, it was a really great session. Um, I thought it was really fascinating and useful. I think um, certainly from my experience, I think a lot of enterprises are um, definitely shooting in the dark when it comes to Teams um, performance. I think people see it as kind of a bit of a black box. But they don't really understand how it works, but I think uh, the solution you've shown and, and the evidence that you can provide around um, certainly router stuff and uh, the Wi-Fi I thought was all quite interesting, especially when we've got, um, like you said, many users working from home and certainly our VIPs who could be, you know, experiencing difficulties, um, which could be Wi-Fi related or router related. Um, I think, yeah, just having the data and having the metrics to, real, to really measure those kind of network improvements, I think is, is an excellent tool. Um, so yeah, I was really impressed. Okay, well, thank you very much. And thank you, uh, <laughs> thank you, Chris, as well, uh, for thank all you, your, thank your you. demo and, uh, and your work preparing that. And thank you uh, for everybody for attending the, this session. Uh, we hope that it was interesting for you as well. It was a pleasure. Definitely. Thank Super, you so thanks, much. Thanks, guys. Um, okay. Just a quick one. If you want to join JF and Christian for a post session networking, you can absolutely sure. do that. Go teams.fans forward slash BRK338. I've posted it in the um, QA. So click that link and you can join them for um, some post session networking right there. Many thanks. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you.